Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 300. I am Brendan, the Ultimate Fighter season 31. Uh, this is the Conor McGregor versus uh, Michael Chandler season. We're going to be covering episode nine here. Okay, so we're going to get into the fight between Austin Hubbard and Roosevelt Roberts. If you're looking for just the fight breakdown, jump to the timestamp down below. But we will also break down the things that happened in the episode, kind of go over the whole episode together here. Um, real quick, before we do get into that stuff, if you like this kind of stuff, you like podcast about MMA, you like MMA in general, subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. I do two or three videos every single week breaking down fights. So uh, from this past weekend fights, I got those up uh, breaking down uh, fights, all the fights from the UFC from this weekend. I do that for every single UFC card. I do it for Bellator, 1FC, PFL, that kind of stuff. So it's not 1FC anymore. I keep calling it that. It's one championship. I keep, call, keep calling it that the old name. Okay, uh, let's get let's get into the episode. So this one starts out with the brackets, right? So they tease this in the last, uh, the end of the last episode. This was the, you know, the stinger, the the teaser for this one. And, you know, it starts showing the brackets. Uh, Dana's given the fighters an option whether or not to go over to Team McGregor. Um, and like I said in the last episode, to, to nobody's surprise, like I don't think, you know, if there's Vegas odds on this, it's probably like a million to one um, whether or not Brad Katona <clears throat> was going to go over to a Team McGregor. Of course, he he went there. And it, listen, I'm I'm sure next episode they're going to get into it and they're going to play it up and talk about how, oh, you know, he never was a part of this team. And, oh, you know, he never he never belonged here. And he always wanted to be you mean he wanted to be with the team that he normally trains with instead of against them. You mean the guys who know everything about him because that's where he trains full time. Come on. Of course he wants to be there. Why wouldn't he be? Come on, we we all would. If you were in that situation, you'd want to be there too. And I thought he was more than professional hanging out on Chandler's team. I don't think he was a detriment to them at all. And, you know, it, so what? He's going over to Team McGregor. Everybody else is saying they don't want to go over there, right? Nobody wants to go to Connor's team. They don't appreciate the way he coaches. They don't appreciate the way he's acted. They don't appreciate a lot of the stuff. So to nobody, I, I wasn't surprised by that either. I didn't think anybody else was going to go over there. Uh, Chandler's strategy to stay neutral makes sense. So he said that he doesn't want to coach either one of these fighters because Austin Hubbard and Roosevelt Roberts are both a part of Team Chandler. And he doesn't want to show favorites, nor does he want to coach the other person knowing the other person's weaknesses, right? Telling Roberts like, hey, go for that knee because Hubbard's been had a tender knee. You know, it, it puts you in a really awkward spot in an awkward position. And you really don't want to do that. So um, neither... In, in fact, he, uh, some of the other the coaches, I thought they were going to be in his corner or in either corner, giving them corner advice. There was none. No corner advice, no yelling, no nothing. You know, they were just there to do, you know, water and tell them, you know, basic information. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, Roberts versus Hubbard is a great fight, uh, made all the more interesting because they became friends. Uh, usually what happens is you have a more tentative start to these kinds of fights. Uh, they treat it like a sparring session. Spoiler alert, that's kind of what happened here. <clears throat> uh, Connor and his team showed up to the house and they had a chef made Irish stew uh, made with his stout. You know, Connor McGregor has a uh, an Irish stout. It, sound, it sounded like it tastes, it, it looks pretty good. I do like Irish stew. It seemed like that was something that I'd be, I would like, but some of the other fighters didn't like that. Again, I know these are weird things that I'm bringing up, but this is kind of what was in the episode. And I think it does show a little bit of uh, more Connor's attitude towards the thing where it's like, becoming a family member, becoming a team member like that, instead of uh, being more involved with like the intricacies and training, it's more of developing uh, a, a sort of a camaraderie through uh, shared, shared goods, shared food, shared stories, those kinds of things. It doesn't necessarily mean that Chandler doesn't do those, but that's, again, I mentioned it in every single episode, that might be the kind of angle that they're going for when they're bringing up Connor and trying to sh you know, shed more positive light on him in these later episodes to give you kind of a little bit to root for, possibly. Um, I think this, oh yeah, and then you know, Dana White lets the semi uh, semifinalists call home. They get a call home because they want to fight. That is so old-fashioned and silly for a modern series. I get it back in the day when that might have made sense, but come on. It's just so freaking, it's... It, it, the the reality television side of this is really played out. And I don't mean that you can't have something fun in it or something interesting going on in in these series, but the whole, oh, we're putting them in there and they're going to drink and do it. Well, they don't drink anymore. And, oh, well, they're going to fight. Well, they don't really fight anymore because they know that's not the, not worth it. Oh, well, they're going to have... 
honestly, it's just a bunch of dudes hanging out in a house, eating and drinking in the same place, and then also going to train. So, you know, especially with a bunch of professionals like this, you're not talking a bunch of bu- about a bunch of bums or hoodlums from the street. Um, and then, oh, Roberts comes in about a, a quarter of a pound over, so Roberts has to cut his hair to make weight. Um, that's about it uh, for the episode. That was interesting. He's the first person to miss weight uh, on the show so far. The fight. Austin Hubbard taking on Roosevelt Roberts. All right, so uh, no coaching from either corner will be interesting. I wrote that as a note. Uh, I don't know if it really played a role necessarily, but I, I think it did. I really do. Um, I think it 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 played into the lack of aggression. It played into the lack of strategy, not strategy necessarily, but the lack of game plan. So I get that falls under strategy. But Roberts was using his reach and his jab early to keep distance. Uh, Hubbard was making the adjustments and extended his hook combination to work well inside and then uh, landed a decent shot in there. Uh, at range, Hubbard's just not as effective early. Roberts is managing distance very well. Hubbard was landed a hard low kick and then a nice left hook. The most consistent success that Hubbard was seeing was with his low kicks, but he just wasn't throwing them enough. I wish I had the striking numbers available because this does play into this round. Uh, Roberts tries to land a flying knee and takes a low blow in the process. Um, close round with neither guy putting a stamp on it and one big shot. Uh, Roberts does uh, more I like neither guy did neither guy did anything significant so significant in this round that clearly it didn't there was no good combination there was no good damaging shots there wasn't this volume it was a very close round but I felt like Roberts won it right I feel like he was landing the jab he was landing at range and he was doing more work I could be wrong but that's what I saw so I had him up 10-9 the silence in between rounds is so weird to me it, I, I I wrote that it was interesting it, it was it was just very weird it throws you off when you're listening to it because you're so used to watching fights with so many, uh, so much ambiance, like the commentary team, the coaches talking, the the crowd, and then when it's just pure silence. Even when they fought in the apex, they still had their coaches there, and uh, it's 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 really weird to have that much quiet. <clears throat> Roberts landed a nice right hand to counter uh, a low kick when they started. Uh, Hubbard was pressing harder in the second round, trying to close off the cage. Hubbard shot in on a single, a single and got on top. Hubbard landed a nice elbow as he re- re-entered full guard. Robert got back, Roberts got back up after about 90 seconds and not much damage. Hubbard didn't really do anything when they were down there. Even with that takedown, I don't think Hubbard did enough. Um, I had Roberts up 20 to 18. Now, if you gave this round to Hubbard for that control time, I, I could understand. I don't think e- either guy really put a huge stamp on this round. Again, these rounds were so freaking close, but I still had it towards Robert. So I had Hubbard needing to finish to get this one. And Hubbard started using the front kick and the push kick in the second round, but he started using them right away in the third round. Hubbard in on a momentary takedown, then they clinch up against the cage. And then Robert uses a standing, Roberts used a standing guillotine to transition to a takedown attempt and got on top. Uh, Hubbard ends up getting back with about a minute and 20 to go, and I thought he needed a finish to win. Uh, Roberts ends around pressuring, landing strikes in the clinch, and I gave it to him easy, 30 to 27. Um, then they, they go to the interview. Uh, they say, Dana, wait, really quick, uh, they gave the decision. It was a split decision, but they gave it to Hubbard. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I, I, That first round wasn't that, I mean, it was close, but I had Roberts winning. So apparently the two judges gave Hubbard the first two rounds. That's the only way this works, right? Because if anybody gave Hubbard the last round, that's total baloney. I had Roberts winning the first, I had him winning all three and for sure the last round and probably in the first round. So that's a, that's a tough that's a tough break for Roberts. I thought he was the better fighter in there. I thought he showed more skills. I thought he did what he wanted to do more often than when Hubbard did. And I thought his his striking was better. I felt like his game plan, uh, not his game plan, his implementation of his uh, MMA game got him closer to getting a finish in this fight than Hubbard ever did, right? I never felt like Hubbard was in a position to finish this fight. Not that either one of them were anywhere near a finish, right? It's just who's closer to finishing the fight at any given moment. And if you do that with volume strikes, right? You land a hundred jabs throughout the round, you were closer because you landed damage. But if you land a hundred jabs that, you know, touch the person and that other that person drops you and nearly finishes you with one big right hand, 
he was closer to finishing the fight and momentary um uh cumulative damage uh, is worth less than in instantaneous damage so i had roberts win in this fight so it's unfortunate it, i think hubbard is a well-rounded fighter i think they're both good i think these two are probably the best um so kurt hollabaugh and jason knight um it's going to be interesting uh, to see what what comes out of that one. Um, Brad Katona versus Timur Valiev, and then Rico uh, DeSulio versus Cody Gibson is also going to be interesting. So um, I think based off of what I saw in this fight, you know, because Dana White was upset about it, I think he's upset because they didn't go out there and try to murder each other, and that's fine. I understand why he's upset because it's not the most entertaining product, but everybody's going to forget about that if they go out there and the next fight's a banger, right, in the finals. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to give a shit about how they got to the finals. I mean, you can look at the highlight reel all you want. Yeah, Uriah Hall had that spinning uh, spinning heel kick uh, KO, but he ended up losing in the finals anyway. And so now that gets to go on his highlight reel, but it doesn't mean anything. My Gaslam ended up winning. <laughs> So that's, that's what I'm saying. There's, it, it's 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 okay for him to be upset, and I understand why he is. I just, I think it doesn't really matter, right? Because they're guaranteed another fight anyway. They know that, and if they go out there and show out in the next one, then that's all that's going to matter. Um, this was more. Uh, this is a much more boring episode, right? Um, I'm not one for. Uh, pointless arguing or bullcrap going on. So it's not like I want more of that. I absolutely don't. Um, I so I but you know the behind the scenes stuff. It was okay. The training stuff was kind of not. There wasn't a ton of training footage in here. And then the fight was you know lackluster. It wasn't the most exciting fight to watch. It was a technical stand up battle where they get, didn't really commit to anything. So um, I, if you didn't watch this episode, you probably don't need to. <laughs> You're not, you're not missing much. You're really not. Uh, you know, Hubbard ends up winning this. Uh, I, I, I would argue that he didn't, but he gets the decision. So good for him. And I hope Roosevelt Roberts finds his way back to the USC because I do think he is probably the best fighter um, in the house. Uh, that's it for me. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Did you uh, did you even watch this one? Are you going to go watch it now? Uh, you know, let me know what you thought about it. Uh, do you like Irish stew? Have you tried his Irish stout? Is it any good? Uh, I appreciate y'all. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you know the next video is coming out. If you're following the series, I've got a breakdown of every single episode of The Ultimate Fighter this season, as well as all of the fights from the past like few years of in the UFC. I have a breakdown of every single one of them. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you want to go in the back catalog while you're uh, perusing the fight pass, um, uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, it's good, some, some good stuff in there. So love y'all. Have an amazing week.